Pua. I'm Paula Katsanos. I'm Dara Frankel. I'm Maddie Donnelly. And this is our science fair project entitled Bacterial Growth, How Clean is Truly Clean. So our idea for the project surrounded wanting to kind of figure out how um, COVID affected how clean surfaces are, um, especially in uh, public spaces versus uh, private spaces, residential spaces. Um, so obviously recently there's been a bigger push towards um, being more sanitary, wiping your desk down after being in class, washing your hands as often as possible, things like that. So we kind of wanted to test how um, much bacteria, how, how much, um, like the difference between how much bacteria was being grown in public places versus um, our own homes. So for our experiment, we broke it up into three different parts. The first part was um, our method and uh, developing the variables. The second part was um, creating a research question and our hypothesis. And our third section was getting um, the data, collecting the data, and analyzing the results. So for our method, in order to perform this experiment, we ordered bacterial growth test kits with pre-laid agar, and then we followed the instructions for use. These are rinsing the sterile cotton swab in distilled water, uh, swiping the cotton swab onto our surface of choice, uh, whether it be in our homes or at the grocery store, which was our public area, and we maintained that it only touched the surface in the process. And then after wiping it onto the agar, we had to keep our Petri dishes in a warm environment of 85 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and our bacteria was able to grow within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, for our variables, our independent variable was public versus home surfaces, and our dependent variable was the amount of bacterial growth. As Paula mentioned earlier, the next step of our research process was developing our research question and our hypotheses. So our research question was, to what extent would the amount of bacterial growth from home surfaces differ from those in public areas? And then we also developed a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. So our null hypothesis was that regardless of location, whether it be a public or private place, the same amount of bacteria will grow. Our alternate hypothesis was that bacteria will grow significantly more in public areas than in our homes. And when developing these, we did acknowledge that public areas are used and touched by more people than in homes just because they receive a lot more foot traffic and a lot more people are going to them. But we also believe that they'd be being cleaned more regularly um, just because of the pandemic and the push for everything to be as sanitary as possible. These are the results of the um, agar plates from the swabs that we tested at home. So we did the toilet handle or like the flusher, the bathroom sink handle, the bathroom door handle, the one inside, um, uh, just my cell phone, and the front door handle, once again, the one on the inside. So as you can see, we have the most bacteria growth on the sink and um a little part of the toilet and then we had some on the front door and some on the phone and the bathroom sink handle didn't uh it didn't grow that much but um that might have been due to experimental error and the ring around the front door one was probably more due to mold as opposed to the actual bacteria itself So these are the photos um, of the bacteria that grew at Acme um, in public at the grocery store where we tested. And as you can see, there's a lot more bacteria than um, what we found in, uh, at the ones that we did at home. And uh, so going from left to right, the spots of Acme that we tested were the water fountain spout. Uh, the second one was the cash register dial where people pay at the front. Um, the third one was the hand sanitizer handle, like where the hand sanitizer actually comes out. Um, the fourth one was a cart handle that was found outside, and then the toilet handle of 
one of the toilets in the bathroom. And so as you could see, there was a significant amount of bacteria that grew in every single one of these spots that we tested. Um, so the bacteria varied. There were some that had a lot more different types of bacteria, like the first two in the last um, Petri dish. But um, the hand sanitizer and the cart handle had one type of bacteria that kind of grew bigger than the other ones. But as you can see, there's a lot more bacteria in the dishes that we tested in public versus at home. So just to run through our analyses and the conclusions that we drew, uh, public surfaces obviously yielded significantly more bacteria than home surfaces, uh, just due to the fact that so many more people are, um, you know, at the public surfaces, at the public areas and touching these surfaces, etc. And we can only clean so much in that amount of time. Uh, due to this, we can reject our null hypothesis since bacterial growth is obviously dependent on location, as obviously the public surface had significantly more bacterial growth than in home. And despite the need for increased cleanliness in the past year due to the pandemic, public services still hold much bacteria. So after reflecting on our whole research process, we concluded that if we were to extend our experiment and continue it for a longer amount of time, we would re-swab the same public surfaces once the pandemic dies down just to see um, how much the pandemic was really influencing this bacteria and if that was a major factor. We would also compare the surfaces when they are cleaned regularly as opposed to more leniently or cleaned less. Some of the implications of our research um, that will definitely be important moving forward is that we realize that despite the fact that people are cleaning surfaces more now just in light of the pandemic and they're hyper aware of germs and bacteria and whatnot, bacteria is still spreading um, in these public areas as you saw in the pictures earlier. And then we also just want to say that it's important to continue to practice um, healthy habits, such as washing your hands and frequently cleaning the surfaces around you and obviously avoiding touching surfaces in public areas just to avoid illness or, you know, just continuing to spread bacteria. So there was some experimental error that caused some problems uh, during our um our project. So the kit mentioned that you should keep the agar at um, temperatures between 80 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, uh, sometimes we went outside of that and that led to some error as you'll see in this picture. So in this picture you can see that one of our dishes actually melted because it was kept in a spot that was too hot but uh, luckily we did have extra plates of agar and we were like still able to test the bacteria in the home after those ones got destroyed. So we were able to answer our initial question for our experiment. And thank you, that's our presentation.